This is video two in our series on database queries in Microsoft Access, and we're going to be looking at the operators for between and in. So let's start with the between. So when you want to use the between operator, you have an between something and something. And it's just like you would understand with English. It's when you want to compare values between two um, particular ranges. So this is ideal for when you have a range of options that follow an order and it also is inclusive so when you specify between this value and that value you are actually including this value and that value as part of the options so let's take an example if we want to find all the values between 100 and 200 then you can say this between 100 and 200 so you say the between word then you put the minimum value then an and and then the maximum value and it will be any if it'll say find all the values that fit that particular criteria and it's inclusive of the 100 and the 200. now when it comes to text let's say between a and d now that seems like a, you can use it for text and it will find all the words that fit between a and d now just take note though, with it includes A and D, so it'll be any word A or A, B, C or A, like Adam, if it was a range of names, it would be Adam, that would be fine. It would be all the names in the B range, like Bartholomew and whatever names you want. All the names in the C range, maybe there's a Carmen, uh, maybe there's a Cameron, whatever. So you've got all these names, but when it gets to the D, so it'll include the letter D, but it won't include all the all the values that come after the letter D. Now in computers, D is actually the first value that starts with a D. Everything that has a D after it will follow after it. So this would not include the word Dave. So anything that's got a D and something else will be after the letter D, so that's not between it. So if you want all the values that include all names that begin with the letter D, you would actually have to go between A and the letter E. So just remember that when you're doing letters like this. And then if you are referring to dates, remember in our previous video we said that dates need to have hashtags around them. So you can say between one date and another date and it would be inclusive of those two dates. So in this example there, if we were looking at the year 2020, 0101 and 2020, 0630, we're basically looking for all the values in the first six months of the year 2020. So that's a list, a range of options that follow a particular order and it includes those options. So let's go do a couple of examples. So here we have our database that we've been working through for this series and we've got some data, we've got some nice information about some people over here and I'm going to go create a query. So let's go create click on the create option and then we're going to go to query design there we go and we're going to select I want the data table there we go so we want to get some names and some uh, surnames of some people here so what do we want to find first let's, do, let's deal with numbers first I want to find all those that paid a value between so we want to say between a uh, hundred and two hundred so you just type it in, in the criteria option, you just say between 100 and 200, and then when you run it, there you can see all the people that paid between 100 and 200. It's very similar to what we did in the previous video where we said greater than equal to 100 and less than equal to 200. That would give you the exact same results, but in this case we're just using a between operator. So that's what you can do between a particular range. Now we talked about text so if we wanted a particular day we want all the surnames between a and d so you see the a and d gets put into double quotes let's see if we find any surnames that begin with the letter d so there you can see all the surnames begin with a and b and c but there's no surname with the letter d why because any surname that's got d and something after it falls after d in terms of its range so if I wanted to find all the all the surnames that begin with an A, B, C, or D, I should actually go to the letter E if that's what you want. And if I run that, you'll see, ah, we do have some uh, surnames that begin with the letter D, but there's no E's. We go up until E, including E, but nothing after E. So E, A, or E, something that's not in our range. So let's go look at dates. If I want to go look at dates, let's delete that. And I want to go, maybe we want to look at all those born in the first six months of the year 2000 so then it must be between the first date in 2000 is 2000 slash 01 slash 01 
and the last date in 2000 would be, or the, the last day in the first six months would be the 30th of June. So that would be 2000 slash June 6th and the 30th. So that's the last day in June. So we find between those two dates. So that's saying all those in the first six months of the year 2000. So the first day in 2000 and the last day of the sixth month in the year 2000. Let's run it. And there's only two people over there that were born in that. If I want to include, maybe I want to change, if I want to say the first, like say from the first of the first of 2000 to halfway through 2001, that would be a year and a half technically. There we can see we've got a lot more options there that fit in that range. Okay, so there we go. So those are all options for between. Now between did an order did us a range of options when there was a particular order. Now what happens if there is no order? If you just want to list a couple of things, then the best option here is to use the n operator and you use what's called set notation. So the way it works is, as I said, you've got a set of options and there doesn't have to be an order. You can, but it just helps if you if you don't have a specific order, you use the set. So for example, if we want to find all the vowels, now you could say I'm using the OR operator that we learned in the previous video. You could say A or E or R or O or U. Or you could use a set and you could just say it's N. So you use the N operator and then in brackets you put all the options that are available separated by comma. So yeah, you could say it's in one of these options. So that you're basically giving them a list of options. So A, E, R, O, or U are just separated there by comma. So it could make your life a little bit easier than having to type them all out. Another example, let's say you were trying to find the month. Let's say you had a field for the month and you wanted to, so the month was a number and you want to find all the months, all the, all the months that had 30 days in it. So those are particular values. So you could say that the month was in one of these options, a four, a six, a nine, or 11, because those are the months that have 30 days. So it would be, what is the fourth month? I think it's April and then it's June and then it's, I think it's August. And then it's the 11th is November. I think it's that one. So you could do that. So that's creating a list. You see, there's no order to it. Um, you're just listing what the options are there. It's numbers. So we don't need to put double quotes around it, but that's how you could use the in operator. So if we try out the in operator, so we could say we want all the number of payments where it was a one or a three or a six, for example. So there we're using the or operator. Let's see what our results are. So one, three, or six. So it looks like there's no one with a six. So there are 37. Or you could just say it's N and we say one comma three comma six if those are your options available. And you should get the exact same results. 37 results. There we go. So you got the same options. Um, we could take that away. Maybe we want the division A or B. Like obviously there are only two divisions or three divisions. So it's easy just to type them out. So there's 72 of them, but you could also use the in A option or, or and the B option is also a possibility. So you put that in the double quotes. You don't have to put the double quotes. I think the double quotes will be put in for you. I'm going to correct that one. There's a double quote. So there we go. So if it's in that range, there we get the exact same results. Okay, maybe there's a list of surnames that we want. Um, so we only want the surnames. There's only three surnames that we want. We want uh, Glenn. Glenn. I think there's a surname Glenn. There's a surname Saunders. Um, Saunders, I think. Saunders. Saunders, maybe. And uh, well, I don't know. Let's think of another. Dalton. I think there was a surname Dalton. So let's try that. So it's in one of those ranges. Boom. There are the two possible, so maybe I think the surname is Saunders. Saunders, not Saunders. Oh, it's still not working. Okay, but it's probably there somewhere. If I look there, it must. Ah, oh, it's no, it's Saunders. No, there's no, uh, there's no U, so I take out the U. Saunders. Saunders. Come on, Mr. Long. There we go. So there I've got a list of surnames that fill, it, fill the right criteria. So remember, you've got to spell it exactly the way it should be. So there, it's, there's no order to it. It's not between G and, and S or whatever, or DNS. It's just listing the options there so that you can find in that particular range. So there we go. So that's when you've got a whole bunch of options to check out using either between or the in operator. For more videos in this video series on queries as well as other access videos and videos for cats, go to our YouTube channel, subscribe, click on the like button. We'd love to hear from you, so please leave a comment. And remember, don't do it the long way.
Do it the Mr. Long Way.